All right, close your eyes. No, go ahead, close your eyes. Nice and tight, shut them tighter. Imagine everything is dark, pitch black. And then in the very beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Can you imagine watching the creation of the world when God came to this world and it was dark and void without form and he started to just speak and things were happening. The very first day, God said, let there be light. Now he hadn't created the sun yet. So where did this light come from? Maybe it was his presence. And as he came, he said, let there be light. And there just was light. And he separated things out. The first day, the very first day was simply light and dark. And God looked at the light and he says, that's good. All right. Now the second day, are you ready for the second day? When God came to this world, all there was was just water that was moving over the surface of the deep. There was no land yet. There was no trees like you see in the background here. All there was was just water. And God said, let there be a firmament. What is a firmament? He separated the waters and he said, let the waters lift up above the others. So there's waters below and waters above. And in between them, was air or firmament. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Take another one. <sighs> That's what God created on the second day, the firmament by separating the waters. What happened to the waters above? Oh, we'll learn about that in a different story. So now we have on the second day, we've got light, we've got waters below, and we've got waters above. The third day. Can you imagine if you were there on the third day? The first thing God said is, let there be dry ground. Do you think there might have been like an earthquake and everything was shaking underneath when all of a sudden ground or land started moving up? Maybe there were hills or maybe it was just dirt. We don't know. But all of a sudden there was dry ground. And it pushed the waters into the different oceans and seas. And then God said, now on that dry ground, let there be flowers. Pop, 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 pop. I imagine a movie effect where it just started going out and spreading. He said the word, there were flowers, and it just started spreading. And there were fields and the hills were covered with beautiful flowers of all different kinds of, of colors. And maybe over here it was just a purple hill and over there it was all orange. Last week, I was driving back from Southern California and as we were coming up down over the grapevine, we saw all kinds of flowers. The poppies were in full bloom. And we saw the hillsides that were all covered in orange. It was beautiful. I saw another hill that was all covered in purple. It was absolutely beautiful. Then God said, let there be trees like some of these trees here. Now these are just one variety of trees in the background, but there were all kinds of trees that popped up all over the land all over the world there were trees and god said let there be fruit trees oh i love fruit right now the fruit is ripe and we have all kinds of fruit in our home and guess what's inside of those fruit seeds god made the fruit and the flowers each with their own kind of seed so that they can reproduce so that they can be planted in another place and grow more flowers and grow more seeds and that's what God did on the third day. So remember, so far we've got light. And then we have the firmament, air. And now we have dry land, flowers, and trees. Now, what do flowers and trees need to thrive or survive? What do they take in to produce their own kind of food? Sunlight. Maybe some of you have learned about something called photosynthesis, sunlight.
But we don't have sun yet. We only have light. God did things in a cool order of need. After the plants were created, guess what happens on the fourth day? God came and he says, let there be a greater light to rule the day. That's the sun. And let there be a lesser light to rule the night. That's the moon. And then he also said, let there be stars that will rule the heavens. The sun started shining on the fourth day. And as it came in, then all of those plants and trees started soaking up the sunlight to be able to make their food. So what's next? We've got water. We've got air. We've got plants and trees. And now we have sunlight and the moon and the stars. On the fifth day, God created fish and birds. Again, imagine if you're there watching this and God speaks. Do you think they were all created all at once? Or do you think that God created the big whale and then he moved on and said, let there be a dolphin. And then he moved on and he said, let there be swordfish and let there be uh, uh, other kinds of fish, tuna. Or do you think God said, let there be living creatures in the earth. And all of a sudden they just were all there, all at once, in their pairs. That's what I think. And I think that God looked at everything that he created. There were all these fish in the sea. All of a sudden the waters were just teeming with life. And then he created the birds. He said, let, let there be fowl or birds to rule the air. And all of a sudden filling the air were birds. And my house, every morning and in the evening, we've got all kinds of birds in the trees. And it's just so beautiful. Can you imagine being there when all these birds just all of a sudden appear and some of them are flying, some of them are singing, giving praise to God. They were all there all of a sudden. And God stepped back and he looked at everything that he had so far and he says, this is good. Sixth day, the evening and the morning were the end of the fifth day and now we have the sixth day, God started with animals. Just like the birds and the fish, he says, let there be animals that cover the earth. And all of a sudden, I think there were animals everywhere all at once in pairs, two by two. There were kangaroos and giraffes and elephants. There were lions and, and dogs and cats. There were creeping critters, maybe the little bugs and spiders. There were all kinds of animals everywhere. And then God did something very special. And this is why I think he created all the animals all at once. Because what he did next, he took his time. He stooped down in the soil and he started to shape with the clay and the dust and the dirt. And he started to shape and he made a head. And then he grabbed some more and he kept scooping it around. Have you ever been to this beach? I was at the beach last weekend and I was gathering some of the beach and making a sand sculpture. Have you ever pulled together the sand and shaped it and, and outlined it? And then you can make your cool designs. I've done different kinds of things like a whale or a giant crab. Well, that's what God was doing with Adam. He was pulling together the dirt and the mud and putting together and shaping together the very first man. God didn't just speak us into creation, into being. No, he formed us. He shaped us. He took time to shape the fingers and put fingernails on us. He took time to give us the lines that we have on our hands and our palms and to make us look the way that we look. He took time to shape our face and give us a nose and ears. And then he was finally done. He had shaped the body and the legs and the feet and the toes. And then he breathed life in the man from his own breath. You see, all the other things were created by speaking, right? But not man. Man, he breathed life into man and he became a living being 
That's pretty cool. We are special. You are special because God took time to give us life. Well, after that, God woke up Adam and he talked to him for the very first time. It wasn't like a baby. It wasn't like a toddler. Adam was full grown. He had, was conscious and had thought like you and me. And he says, look, Adam, look around. This beautiful place, this is your home. God was so excited. I imagine he was just bubbling over with excitement with Adam. This is this place that I've created for you. It was the Garden of Eden. It was the most beautiful place on earth. And he says, this is your home. And all these animals are for you to rule over, to play with, to have fun. But you're in charge. And I want you to give them names. And all the animals came two by two and they came and they passed in front of Adam and he had so much fun looking at them and seeing what they were like and giving them names. But he noticed something. He says, God, what's going on here? I see all the animals. They've got pairs. They're pairs, right? I mean, there's a male and there's a female, but it's just me. What, what's going on here? And then God put Adam to sleep. And maybe you've read the story, maybe you haven't. But he took one of his ribs, and he was the first surgeon. He took one of his ribs and he put it next to Adam, and from that rib, he created Eve. And then they woke up and they were the pair, and that was the very first wedding. Finally, the day finished. And then God did one more day. That was Friday evening, and God stopped from all his creation, and he rested. And that last day, the Sabbath day, the seventh day, God blessed it, and he made it a special holy day. And you know what he said about that? He said, that is good as well. That is a special day where we get to stop all of our other stuff and spend time with our family and spend time with God. And he says, this is good. And that was the week of creation. And that's why we have a seven day week ever since. God created all these things. He created these animals for us to have fun. He created the flowers and the plants. He created you and me. And he created the special Sabbath day. Always remember to take time to honor God and give thanks for the things that he's made just for us.